So we're looking at Somewhere's Home, and this is part two. So we're going to pick up exactly where we left off. And we entered in the values from the product database into here. As I get going on to here for part two, I'm looking down, and the biggest value that I really want to keep an eye on first and foremost is this solar fraction. And the solar fraction is the percentage of solar energy extracted from the sun that's given back to the system. In essence, what we're saying is almost 100% of our energy is coming from the sun. This can't be right. So let's take a look at here. I noticed very quickly that this was a zero right here. There was nothing in this case. So I'm going to bring this number back. And you won't have to worry about that because that value would have been given to us when we did their install. And I believe the, the value that I had written down from the material of my, and I had all the spec sheets, was 0.75 BTUs per hour per cubic foot for this coefficient factor of the system. And now, if I don't know what this value is, there's a couple ways of doing it. I can click on this help button. It's a performance of a solar collector. So I'll be honest, I don't really know exactly what that thing is. But I do know that when I looked on my data sheet, so as embarrassing as it is to say, I found it. It was 0.75. I entered it in. It brought my solar fraction down, which as a technician and an install person, this is a more manageable number. We should have had two solar thermal installs to make a good case for our offloading of water and let's bring that back down to two. Let's just say we had two thermal panels up on the roof and we're at about 50 percent. It's a little low for us but I mean that would extract about 50 percent of the energy. I personally have these older solar thermal panels. I put them up and that brings my value up to 78 percent. Now I'm going to take miscellaneous losses at 10 percent. It should be about two percent per solar thermal panel that's up mounted somewhere so I'm going to leave that at 10. And then I'm going to say okay I need 132 gallons minimal. It's a storage capacity for us in central Illinois, we're going to want to leave it as a one-to-one -one ratio, one square foot per gallon of water for collection. Heat exchanger is yes. By definition, we like to leave our heat exchange option as 85%. That doesn't always mean that's the case, but that's a good offset. This miscellaneous loss is additional losses from pump and other sorts of insulation and so forth. So there's some losses that are incurred here. And if you're not sure about it, then you can highlight that, hit help, and it'll tell you. But just for ease of argument, I like to be conservative. I'm going to leave that at 4% data that we've gleaned from the internet and from Ross at the MREA has kind of given me the impression that I'd like to keep my pump power, the power it requires to run that electrical pump to pump the fluid from the storage tank to the collectors as about 0.6 watts per foot squared. Now I got beat on a few times because I had the darn thing at watts per meter square so make sure it's per foot square. And then at my electrical rates I again went conservative as 0.26 so 12 and a half cents per kilowatt hours the electrical rate and that gives me an electrical summary of I'm saving about 11.8 million BTUs if I move that decimal place one to the right that will give me therms that's just a very rough equation to give me therms so 118 therms of energy will be saved so I will have a solar fraction which is touch on the high side at 78 percent but the reason it's high is I had the solar thermal panels I put them on my roof or in my backyard in this particular case but I put them out and I'm gonna do a little bit of heating in a workshop it just happened to be that way it didn't have to be that way but I had that energy available to us what did I have in the system well what you haven't seen is the backstory. The solar site analysis requires us to go out and look at the homeowner, and this is a homeowner guy. If you haven't figured out, this is my house. So at my house, I have a open vented, it's just a 80-gallon hot water tank. That's where I'm going to store my hot water system. So the hot water system, I'm going to have a storage tank, which in the garage is uh, 200 gallons. So it's the minimum of 135 gallons that is required. So about the 132, 135 gallons, one, one for one. But I'm going to say, now, I made this very high. The efficiencies really is not 80%. For just a regular hot water storage tank, it's about 65%. That is pretty good. So that means the storage, the heat's being wasted to keep that water warm throughout the air is 65%. So let's, let's look at that. So that really gives me 147 to 32 look at this here's the difference let's take a look at how much energy that I'm going to be saving throughout the year I currently I'm going to utilize 233 therms by putting the solar thermal system up I am going to only use 51.6 therms 
and at the cost of 63 cents per therm, which is a rather conservative number, but as of late, the last three years, our natural gas has come down, so I'm being conservative. What that means is I would have spent $147 to $32 today by putting this system up. But let's just take a quick sneak peek. If I take 223 therms and subtract the 51.6, that gives me a hundred and 71 therms of net savings. And you're thinking, well, wait a minute. If I had 118 therms of produced heat, but yet you're telling me that I'm saving 171 therms, well, wait a minute, there's still some waste. And that waste is going up in the 65%. So if I take 118 and divide it by the 0.65, guess what that gets me? That gets me right at the difference between these two values right here. Basically what I'm seeing is the energy inefficiency of the losses of this system. And so that's what's going on in our, in our structure right here. I've got two ways of calculating this. So what it comes down to is I have 118 therms or 11.8 million BTUs of energy that I'm able to capture from the sun and directly offset the hot water in my home. As I look at that and I look at the difference between therms used and therms used with the solar thermal system, I will have a money savings of the difference here, so somewhere near $115. But that excludes, I haven't included, the fuel cost required to run the pump. So that electrical pump is going to require some energy savings. So that's going to get us into the next state of looking at the cost analysis of this thing.